Uh, the topic of my discussion today revolves around the hopes for patients suffering from cancer. What's cancer? So it's a sort of abnormal growth of your own cells. Our own cells. They grow faster. They don't die at all. And when they are benign, that they are not terribly bad, we call them tumors. But once they become really bad, malignant, we call it malignant, and sometimes they leave a tissue to move to another tissue, which is metastasis. And that's when they become really dangerous. And there are a different form of cancers. The picture you're seeing is brain tumors. And then there is breast cancer, prostate cancer, and others. This is breast. And the challenge is once they have metastasized, once they have, they have become uh, malignant, so far there is no treatment, except in one case, a cancer called CML is a leukemia with Gleevec. So I like to have audience like yours. The best thing you could do to prevent cancer is early detection. Most of us, we don't go for annual checkups. Once you are over the age of 40, you have to. Because once the cancer is detected early, there is hope of treatment. So that's the most important thing you will do. Then in terms of uh, females, there is a vaccine called Glacidel for cervical cancer. So in the United States, girls at the age of 12, 13, they give them the vaccine once they are not sexually active. And we don't do it here. It's almost 85% preventable once you have that vaccine. So what you are seeing there is some of the properties of the cancer. They grow very fast. They don't die because all cells in our body, they are programmed to die. But cancer cells, they do not die. They keep on growing. They form even their own blood vessels called angiogenesis. And once you give them any anti-growth uh, agent, it's not effective. So big challenges. There are different causes of cancer from bacteria. A good example is H. pylori, causing gastric cancer. Viruses can also cause cancer, like liver cancer by hepatitis C. And also alcohol, a bit debatable, but um, cigarette smoking, tobacco for lung cancer. But luckily enough, in Nigeria, we hardly smoke, not as in Europe and Asia. But if you go to places like Yola and Katsuna, they smoke a lot. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised if you find cases of lung cancer. But in UMTH here, University of Medical Teaching Hospital, we did some studies. We could not find even one lung cancer. The same thing in um, Amadou Bello University. So we are lucky. But lung cancer is the leading uh, cause of cancer. I mean smoking in the world. And you'll find that lung cancer has the highest incidence and even uh, death, mortality. Radiation also kills. Luckily enough, with our black skin, we are not very susceptible to that, UV. But the Europeans, the white people, they have lots of uh, melanomas. But here in UMTH, we found cases of skin cancer too. Next. And cancer is the second leading cause of death 
follow um, after cardiovascular diseases, number one. And in 2018, there were about 18.1 million cases and 9.6 number of deaths, so almost 50%. If you combine death as a result of HIV, malaria, TB, combine all the things, it's just about 400,000 worldwide. Breast cancer kills over 500,000. Breast cancer alone. In Nigeria, we have cases of cancer, but it's very low, out of 100,000, about 20, 22 people have cancer. Because we die very early, <laughs> the life expectancy in Nigeria is about 55 years. Five years ago, it was 49. So usually you find this death after the age of 40, 50, 60, 70. And if you look at uh, the studies we carried out for five years uh, in University of Medigree Teaching Hospital, Amongst the females, breast cancer, cervical cancer are the leading cancers, followed by ovarian and others. Men, prostate cancer is the major one. So we have cancers in Nigeria. That's reality. So I was in the United States for about 25 years, University of Virginia. At that time, the best public university in the country. And I was doing state-of-the-art research. We are looking at genomics. We are looking at cell biology, molecular biology. We are studying all these cancer cells at the level of RNA, DNA. So suddenly, I found myself in University of my degree. From first world to a developing world. I won't say third world. I had about 13 PhD students in my lab in the US, postdocs about eight, so many medical doctors, with a grant of five million, that's 1.86 billion. Then I found myself with my degree. No Kobo, no lab, just as a teacher. And I sacrificed my career there because the faculty of pharmacy was having a problem. And because University of Bayou sponsored me for my master's and PhD. <laughs> I took the challenge to come back and save the faculty, and I did save the faculty. And our faculty of pharmacy here is one of the best, if not the best, in the University of Bayou Degree here. So I said, what, what should I do? Because United States is a producer nation. Nigeria is a consumer nation. There they do research. Here we don't care about research. All what we want is finished product. So I said, okay, I will try the research. And I will do cancer research. I will establish the first cancer lab in Nigeria. And all my colleagues in the university, they said, impossible. Just the way they told uh, the young lady, impossible, you can't do it. Her, because she's a woman, she can't do this, she can't do this. But I have the advantage of being a man. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I don't accept is no. If you want to be my friend, don't tell me if I want to do something, tell me no, it's not possible. I don't believe in impossibilities. Everything is possible. Try it. If you fail, then you say it's impossible. So I st started, and I looked at the things we have in Nigeria. We have plants. And these plants have all sorts of potentials, not only for cancer, but other diseases. So I started 
looking at this uh, plant and sativa, isolated the compound, tested it. So the blue color you are seeing, it's live cells. And if you give the plant or the active ingredient, you see dead cells. And this is in the lab, you do it in vitro. So the next option is you can take it to animals. So we injected in animals, this is in collaboration with the University of Virginia at that time, and you could see how small the tumors are, just after two weeks. So this plant is effective in the lab and also in animals. The next thing to do is clinical trials, and we look for money, 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 no money. So I gathered a team, because cancer is complicated. There is no way you can cure cancer alone. So these are members of my team. You could see pharmacists, uh, medical doctors, pathologists, and we started brainstorming, addressing problems. And then luckily, I met Engineer Ali. He's right here in your midst. Please stand up. He is a consultant herbalist. He is an engineer. He is our brain box. He knows everything about this medicinal plant. So we embarked this journey with him. You will see one of his plants, how active. So the purple color, lots of cells. As you increase the amount, the cells kept on dying. This is a brain tumor, breast cancer. We did the same thing, you know? And we tested about 60 different plants. We came out with 25, uh, 35 that showed activity. Out of that 35, we got 13 that were extremely efficacious, potent, better than any orthodox drugs we have tested. Yes. And then we tried toxicity because most of these traditional herbalists, they don't control the dosage. And five of them that we tested, exceptionally good, not toxic. We went as high as five grams per kilogram. So an average body weight is 70. Five by 70 is 350 grams. You cannot give anybody, any person that. So being a herbalist, we said, okay, try this in uh, patients. He had a patient, look at this patient. Before treatment, normal, nothing. They would put uh, straw there before she even takes anything. After one month, look at how it's shrinking. <laughs> After three months. So who will tell you that we don't have plants that are effective? And this is not the only one. We have even professors in University of Ibadan, one from um, University, uh, Delta State University on this plant, they have cancer, one breast cancer, one cervical cancer, and they are alive after five years. They are still alive, you know? So to do other things, you, do, you can isolate some compounds, and these are something that if you want to publish it in other countries. But the most important thing is therapy for us here. So we want something similar to China or India, where we can take our plants. We don't have to isolate anything. We can give the crude extract to our patients as long as they get cured. That's the most important thing. So the next are uh, just uh, some of what we have, the problems we face, and then how we solve some of these problems. This is how we solve our problem of electricity, because they say impossible. But we bought solar panels. If you go to pharmacy now, we have our panels, we have our own inver inverters, and these are real incubators, CO2 incubators. This is a micro, microscope, and this is liquid nitrogen. Most of our cells are in that liquid nitrogen, and you can keep the cells in liquid nitrogen because it's minus 195 degrees centigrade. For even one million years, the cells will stay there. We have prostate cancer, breast cancer, cervical cancer, brain tumors. Uh, recently, we got uh, uh, two other cancers pancreatic cancer. So that's how to move these countries through research. There are challenges, but challenges are good for the brain. 
you have to solve and we have to move our country from consumer nation to a producer nation. Thank you.